Hello and welcome once again to another informative weekend edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. Thanks for joining us. Inside today's pages, we'll be taking care of your health, your business, and your educational needs. Stick around for this exhilarating journey. You don't want to miss any of it. Are you an entrepreneur producing an excellent Jamaican product or service? Did you know you can earn hard currency and more significant returns by exporting? Contact the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce to help propel your business along the export lane. Everything you can produce, the Jamaicans overseas want it. We're not going to get rich by just bringing down the debt. We're going to get rich by exporting a lot more. So grow exports, create job opportunities, drive economic growth through exports to make Jamaica a richer and much more prosperous country. Thanks again for joining us. Export and grow into a prosperous nation has been the mantra of the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce. Let's see how small businesses through Jampro's Export Max program are getting support to achieve this goal. Before Export Max 3, our company needed a larger presence within the U.S. market. We were reaching our capacity in terms of being able to fill the orders, and we also wanted to be able to leverage a program that can guide us within many inroads in within America and also other markets such as Europe but also to leverage to expand to grow our facility. Now through the Enterprise Development for Export Growth, Export Max program, enterprising goals like these are being realized. It is an initiative of Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO, and is now in its fourth phase. Export Max started in 2011, coming out of an understanding that we had to do a little bit more hand-holding, look at companies and their specific needs, and then work with them so that they're ready to go into markets overseas. Micro small and medium enterprises, MSMEs, are getting access to international markets for both goods and services. Jambro is arming these entities with the capacity and knowledge to be competitive and penetrate, hold and grow their share of these markets. The Enterprise Development for Export Growth, Export Max program has been growing consistently since its inception as a pilot project in 2011 with 15 MSMEs. Sharp focus is on enhancing internal capabilities, encompassing finance, management, technology, productivity and general business processes. Collectively, these serve to address the supply-side challenges faced by existing and potential exporters and export-ready firms. The first thing we do is our assessment of where they are, where they're going. We come up with a program of activities and we work with our partners. So there's the Jamaica Productivity Center, the Bureau of Standards, it could be the Heart Trust, and then we have different interventions. So we have, through our partnership with the JMEA, and the Jamaica Business Development Center. We've worked with them to get business mentors and coaches, people that have been in the space of exports for a while and can teach them and show them some of the things they need to do. We would have access, we have an e-ping. It's an e-ping, it's a, it's a process where the information to access a market, so it's with certification requirements, standard requirements, testing requirements, and those kind of things. So we provide that information to MSMEs and additionally now, on the other side, so the bottom up, we provide testing services in the labs. We have calibration services for equipment, uh, micro B testing, engineering testing, and accreditation service, certification services. So the BSJ intro, from a top down and a bottom up, we have MSMEs to access these markets. We provide the working capital support for, for, for these exporters, mainly in pre-shipment and post-shipment financing. The pre-shipment finance would allow them to purchase their raw material, retool, um, equipment, in order to get them ready for export. 
In, a, in, in addition to that, we also have what we call the trade credit insurance. Jamaican companies are also getting introduced to global markets through Jampro-led trips to international trade shows. The agency is also ensuring local companies have a platform to capitalize on global e-commerce with market penetration support. There is a big thrust now around digital marketing and e-commerce for exports. And that is where we also have an advantage so that rather than making that push to find buyers and distributors in overseas markets, we're going straight to the consumer so that the average person in the middle of the US or in some outer town in the UK can start to order products without having to worry about the hassle of how do you find those markets. Export Mass was really, really good for us. Um, we not only network with people amongst us within the Export Mass, but with Team Jampro. They really mentor us through, um, through we had, we had um, training with technical advice, marketing plans being done for us, and they were just buzzed. Even through the old COVID era, they, they had created an online platform for us to still meet with our network with customers and new linkages as far as, as, far as Dubai, Saudi Arabia, so we're able to get linkages into these markets. We have partners that we have worked with, Amazon as you know, uh, Jamaican companies can now put their products on Amazon for our shipment overseas. There are other local companies such as Carib Shopper that we've worked with in the past and there are others that are coming on board every day that we will continue to expose our companies to. While and after the Export Max 3 program, the exposure that was given to us in marketing, promotion, was extremely valuable. And that exposure generated more sales uh, than we have generated before going into the Export Max 3 program. With Jampro, it was market exploration, market data, market linkages, and also the discount services such as for example the BSJ. The BSJ provided us with discounts for testing and lab testing is some of our and most critical aspect of our to control our product quality. Also with JBDC um, by pulling, on, pulling alongside us of course and creating templates for us to follow and to work with. Also providing insight in how we can become more efficient I would like to be able to thank them mutually. The export-led growth vision continues to garner more partnership among the private and public sectors. Programs such as Export Max are helping to eliminate the country's trade deficit and create a more prosperous Jamaica. Out of many let us all unite We are one people that will win this fight Strong against corruption, yeah this is right So we should all unite and commit to the fight Against corruption, that's the mission Out of many one people, there is no division Seen it clearly, integrity is the vision Only good can come from a nation that's filled with ambition It's a must, we facilitate growth Cause we want our children's future to be filled with hope Out of many let us all unite A message from the integrity Commission. Science and technology are critical to our sustainable future and development goals, hence the need to master knowledge in these areas. At this next juncture, we're taking you on a pathway that's building Jamaica's capacity to transform and sustain teaching proficiency in science, technology, and maths. <music> Jamaica seeks to accelerate our pace of growth and we want to have a proficient, technically proficient workforce that can sustain higher value-added investment jobs. So if we are serious about elevating our levels of growth and accelerating our pace of development, we are going to have to produce far more math and science and engineering and technology capable students coming out of our secondary system. And that all starts with teachers.
And so, the government of Jamaica has embarked on a program to ensure there's a continuous flow of homegrown talent to fuel investment opportunities and meet the island's growth and development agenda. In steps, the Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics STEM Scholarship Program. The initiative is a partnership involving the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service, the Premier Tertiary Education Loan Provider, the Student Loan Bureau, and Micro University College, the island's oldest teacher training institution. The program will see $2.5 billion being invested in the training of 1,250 teachers over the next five years. The provision of this scholarship will foster the development not only of the scholarship recipients, but the nation based on best practices, new trends, and technological innovation garnered through their educational pursuits. Their new knowledge and creative thinking will help to push Jamaica's 2030 vision, making Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business. Jamaica is ready for this game change and these scholarships will support those bright young Jamaicans who are ready to bring their A game to education. There's enough evidence to prove that boys and girls learn differently and STEM training will equip our teachers with the ability to impart differentiated instructions so that the future men and women will benefit and maximize the process and become part of the engine of change to make Jamaica a great nation. The foundations being laid by you will continue to develop our country for generations to come. This is definitely a step in the right direction as we strive towards greater levels of efficiency in our education system. These are full tuition scholarships where all tuition expenses are paid. And so you basically, you graduate from high school, you have the courses to matriculate, you walk into Micah University College, you don't pay a dollar over the next three or four years, and you walk into a job teaching your fellow Jamaicans. Prospective scholarship recipients, this is your chance to build a rewarding career as you become the next generation of homegrown innovators and problem solvers. With these scholarships being offered by the Ministry of Finance, I have faith that Jamaica's young adults seeking assistance to pursue an education in STEM will also be given the opportunity to inspire before they expire. Faith it! until you make it. I didn't say fake, you know. Faith. Because with faith and determination, I got through. And because of that, I am a testimony. And I can testify that I am a mathematics teacher who is out here changing lives. And I hope to see all of you one day who is going to enter the profession. What we are seeking is 1,250 Jamaicans who have a desire to inspire the next generation to achieve heights that Jamaica has not yet seen, but that we know is possible. I want you to advertise this far and wide. Let us see it everywhere that we are on the hunt for math and science teachers. We're launching a revolution in the country as far as STEM education is concerned. Apply for a STEM scholarship for the opportunity to get qualified to pursue a rewarding career as a STEM teacher. Find out more at www.mof.gov.jm forward slash scholarships. Sign up for a STEM scholarship today. Greatness is in your bones. I'm unstoppable. I'm a fortune with no bridge. I'm invincible. Yeah, I win every single day. We are looking for great things this season. And I know you believe it within your very core. 
and so we have committed to continue the support behind you and in front of you and beside you so that you can excel and you can do well and you can be your best self. I'm unstoppable. I'm a butcher with no brains. I'm invincible. Yeah, I win every single day. April is Autism Awareness Month and we now invite you on a short health-wise journey to learn about this brain-related disorder and how it affects children. Hi, I'm Vanessa Megu. I'm the mother of an autistic child, Adriana Francis. It is Autism Awareness Month, and what I'd like from Jamaica as a parent of an autistic child is maybe a little bit more tolerance, a little bit more understanding. When we take them on the road, if they're in an unfamiliar situation, there are times when they'll throw what would look to you as a, like a tantrum, but it's actually a meltdown. Because for them, they are highly sensitive, and many times sounds that we can block out feelings that we can analyze or we can assimilate, it's hard for them. They, they feel like all sounds are being thrown at them, all feelings are being thrown at them. They're overwhelmed with stimuli, with sensations, and for them, a part of the re response to this overstimulation is for them to hit their heads, for them to scream, for them to behave in a way that as a society we may find unacceptable, but as a mother of an autistic child, I completely understand and we're just asking for a little bit more tolerance from you. Do you have a business offering goods or services? Did you know you can sell your products to the government? Yes, this is done through what's called public procurement. Let's learn more about public procurement in Jamaica, like who can benefit from government's three billion US dollar yearly spend on goods and services. Procurement is the acquisition of goods, works, and services by any means. That is by higher purchase, rental, lease, and just by regular buying. Procurement is really about getting from the economic market those things that the government needs in order to deliver services that it's mandated to deliver. That's what public procurement is all about. Anybody can be a supplier to the government. There are only two criteria that you must meet. That is, ordinarily, suppliers must be registered with the Public Procurement Commission and must be tax compliant in order to be eligible to participate. But there's no discrimination, there's no fetter on your participation. The government spends approximately three billion United States dollars every year in the public procurement market in Jamaica. Three billion United States dollars, that's about 450 billion Jamaican dollars. And we use that to purchase petroleum products, but also industrial equipment and the construction of buildings and roads and services for the cleaning and portering of hospitals. It's a really big business and you should be a part of it. In Jamaica, public procurement is governed by a legislative framework found in the Public Procurement Act 2015, as well as the Public Procurement Regulations 2018, the Public Procurement Reconsideration and Review Regulations 2018, the Public Procurement Registration and Classification of Suppliers Regulations 2019 and a range of other ministerial orders that have been made pursuant to those legislation. The Office of Public Procurement Policy is the central focal point on procurement thought and development in Jamaica. It is a branch of the Public Expenditure and Policy Coordination Division at the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. The Office of Public Procurement Policy is mandated by law to develop the public procurement system using statistics and data and cutting-edge thought to ensure that public procurement is efficient, effective, and it does exactly what it's meant to do to ensure that services are delivered to all the citizens of Jamaica. 
In Jamaica, public procurement rules are based on four main principles. One, a principle of transparency that says government must be open and forthright and must also ensure that all suppliers have the ability to see when contract opportunities are available and that anyone who is interested can understand the actions and decisions that have been taken in the public procurement transactions. Two, a principle of competition, which says as far as possible, government should ensure that all the suppliers who can get a shot at earning a contract. Three, a principle of equitable treatment that says once you are able to supply, you should be asked to supply and that you should receive the same treatment right across the board. There should be no distinction unless there's a good reason for doing so. And finally, a principle of proportionality. And that says, we should not do what goes beyond what is necessary to get things done. So all the bureaucratic and difficult uh, parts of the process, we must be careful to reduce those so that we can get into contract quickly and get that contract implemented in the best possible way. Those are the four main principles that underpin the public procurement system in Jamaica. The Procurement Review Board is a quasi-judicial tribunal. And what that means, it's a body that's established by the Public Procurement Act that's assembled to hear complaints from aggrieved bidders. That is, those persons who have participated in public procurement and who feel that the system has not worked for them in the way expected. So maybe they will allege that the procuring entity did not follow the rules or that they did not give them the right points, etc. The Procurement Review Board will hear those complaints and will direct the procuring entity or the aggrieved bidder to uh, make restitution or amends as necessary. Now, the Procurement Review Board differs from the Integrity Commission or any other oversight institution. Those institutions are empowered to identify acts of misfeasance and corruption and to ensure that appropriate sanctions are levied against those who are caught in those acts. As we approach the end of our half hour inside Jamaica magazine, we'll pull your attention to supporting the country's food security. One of the ways to do that is by growing some of the food you eat at home, even if you are living in an urban space. Urban gardening is the cultivation of vegetables, fruits, aromatic plants and herbs in an enclosed space or your backyard. It's an ideal way for those with little space to participate in the process of food production, saving money while feeding themselves. Practical application is one of the best methods of imparting new knowledge. The Jamaica 4-H Clubs ran with that concept when it set up an urban garden display project at 123 Duke Street in downtown Kingston. This project was born out of the COVID pandemic where we recognize that food production has to become everybody's business. Traditionally, most of our food in Jamaica is cultivated in rural areas. We believe that even if you are in a dormitory community without land space, we believe that there is still an opportunity for you to produce. In this urban model, you would realize that we are demonstrating how you can do air planting, how you can do planting on your fence line, how you can produce food in different medium. And so we are utilizing a fully integrated approach to from you know, collecting your own water by generating your own nutrient within the urban garden model setting to be able to produce the food that you will eat. There are a few vital things that plants need to grow. These include 
sunlight, proper temperature, moisture, air, and nutrients. One of the basic pieces of technology inside our urban model garden is to demonstrate rainwater harvesting. From your roof, you're collecting your water, not only your roof, but just anywhere there's a runoff, because it could be a runoff underground, and what you want to do is to be able to have some storage capacity. In the 4 H urban garden, the water is stored underground to ensure there is more available space on the surface. Of course, your environment will determine the most effective setup for your system. One of the good things about Jamaica, other than when we have night, we always have sunlight. There are some plants that require a lot more lighting than others. And so one of the things we demonstrate or we, we share with urban gardeners is where you put what. So there are some plants that you can do indoors. There are some plants that will strive and do better if they were to be grown outdoor. Whether you're using container, you're using your, 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 your fencing, you're using backyard, front yard, or your rooftop. Another feature that is demonstrated here is composting. To my right is our composting area, and we have a rotor composting bin, as well as we have a, a regular bin. And in fact, just about all the vegetative matter and the, 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 the waste from the birds and the animals um, across there are in fact all placed into our composters and that is broken down to provide organic matter. Because again, you know, your, your soil needs that for aeration, it needs it to add humus and, um, and that's what is going to allow your plants to grow well. And all this can be done in your own space. Livestock is another avenue you can choose in your urban gardening. Rabbit rearing is an excellent source of protein and it doesn't require much space. You can also use the plants in the garden to feed them. Other animals can be included such as chicken and fish. We do a lot of different birds here. You can do your ornamental fish, you can do your tilapia, you know. Um, so, and you can also do your, your, your domestic hens. Because that's something we are also promoting, is to get back to those um, domestic hens for eggs and meat. There are many things you can do in terms of livestock. It's as, as almost as diverse as you're going for crops. To replicate this model in your urban space, speak with your Jamaica 4-H Club's parish officer. You can receive seeds and other planting material to get you started. One of the biggest threats right now in the world is not war or COVID is really to have a sustainable supply of food. And the view is that no longer can we only rely on the traditional food producer. I think food production has to become everybody's business. And I think the extent to which we are able to get all our people to produce some of what you will consume, I think is one of the greatest steps we can take in looking at the phenomenon of Food sustainability. A strategy the Jamaica 4 H Society has started to aid in maintaining sustainable food within communities. And if you haven't begun the process in your space yet, you can start now. This is where we leave you on today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Be here on this station tomorrow for more information you can use to transform your life. Until then, visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for this and other offerings. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Theodore Henry. Remember, live good and take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.